Hi, I'm Dr. May Seibel, editor of My Menopause Magazine. I've just returned from the annual meeting of the North American Menopause Society in Dallas, Texas, and I did an interview with Dr. Doris Taylor about groundbreaking work she's doing in how stem cells actually are the root cause of aging and what you can do to slow your aging process down. Let me begin by asking you just to state your name. I'm Doris Taylor. And tell me uh, your position now. I'm the Director of Regener Regenerative Medicine Research at the Texas Heart Institute in Houston. Now let me just say, I just heard Dr. Taylor give what was a standing ovation amongst a group of lecturers that were all outstanding. This is probably one of the best I've heard about a topic that has to do with something very important that has to do with aging and particularly aging of the heart. So maybe you could tell us a little bit about why men and women are different in terms of their aging process. Well, I believe that aging is really a failure of our body's ability to repair daily wear and tear and that it reflects a failure of stem cells. And what do I mean by that? Stem cells are basically cells in our body that do two things. They make more of themselves and they um, become a lot of different kinds of cells. So they're the cells our body stores in bone marrow or in blood to repair our organs and tissues. And as we age, we lose stem cells and the ones we have don't function as well. But the interesting, even more interesting part of that is men lose stem cells first. Why do you think that is? Because women are superior. Um, I think if you think about it, when you fall down, you scrape your knee, you get a sore, anything happens, you get, you get a red reaction around that. That's inflammation. Inflammation is nature's cue to say, I've got an injury, send me cells. If you get the cells there, you turn off the inflammation, but if you don't get the cells there, your body ramps up inflammation. The reason I think that men age faster than women is women have to have a modified inflammatory response because they have to be able to get pregnant. Think about it. If we reacted to every single difference, we'd never carry a pregnancy to term. So our inflammatory response is very different than men's and I think it's modified, it's decreased, and therefore we don't use up these cells as often. So we have cells that are maintained for a longer period of time. So basically the fact that women are able to carry a pregnancy without rejecting the baby inside of her requires the woman's body to work in a little bit different way than men. And as a result, you're saying that women are able to live longer, they're able to keep their stem cells longer, and they're able to help their bodies aging better. Heart disease is the number one killer of women as well as men. Mm -hmm. But women don't develop heart disease until later in life than men. And I believe that's because women don't lose their stem cells until after menopause. And so you believe that there's a hormonal component then right. to maintaining stem cells. So how does that play into diseases like heart disease or other conditions? Heart disease is really an inflammatory disease. Mm -hmm. It's a disease where you develop uh, atherosclerosis or plaque in your blood vessels and you get inflammation that basically says I have an injury. You need stem cells to repair that injury. Mm -hmm. If you, um, the more stem cells you have, the more repair you can do. Men tend to lose those stem cells earlier, and we think that's for two reasons. One, men tend to have more inflammatory molecules in their blood just naturally. And two, the more hits you take, the more stem cells you use. And if you think about the normal course of life, 
men often take more risks, have more injuries, have more, abuse their bodies a bit more, mm -hmm. and they use up cells. I think you put the two together and... Well, let me ask you this. We have a situation where men are going to continue to be different from women. Right. Women are going to continue to be the ones that have estrogen, and at a certain time in life, around menopause, typically, they lose estrogen. So what does this uh, say about, say, early menopause or women who go through menopause and estrogen treatment? Does it have a, a practical side Absolutely. that can help women in their decision making? Absolutely. We're, we're actually doing some studies right now with a group at Cedar sinai Noel Barry Merz and, and Dr. Uh, Cassandra Schufeld, to measure levels of estrogen and how they affect stem cells in your blood and measure women who have very low estrogen levels or who have not premenopausal women who have not had a period for a couple of months at least three months we're studying how those low 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 estrogen levels affect their stem cells our data would suggest their inflammation is higher as estrogen goes down, their ability to, um, stem cells are typically grow up in our bones, mm -hmm. in our bone marrow, and they have to get to our blood, and inflammation is one of the signals for that. The data tend to suggest that as estrogen gets lower, you can't get the cells into your blood as well. Mm -hmm. So even if you have them, you can't use them as well. So a lack of estrogen is in some ways a lack of the body's ability to, to repair itself. To repair itself because it can't either it loses stem cells directly or it loses the ability to move and mobilize the stem cells from the bone marrow into the, the bloodstream. The places where you need them. Mm -hmm. Now is taking estrogen a simple solution? No. Because after menopause, estrogen doesn't work as well. We all know that. And we don't have data yet that suggests... Doesn't work as well in terms of the stem cell component? We're, we don't know that yet. Uh -huh. We don't know that yet. Those are the experiments we're actively doing right now. One way to think about doing those experiments is to also look at women who are undergoing in vitro fertility treatments. High, high estrogen levels. See if they have very high stem cells. We know estrogen itself mobilizes stem cells out of the bone marrow into the blood. We know statins mobilize stem cells out of the bone marrow into the blood. It's really interesting how we're, what we're, how we're discovering that many of the drugs that we use now actually are just modifying the body's ability to repair itself. In part by changing inflammation, by changing stem cells, and by changing the the function of those stem cells as well. Not just the number, but the function. So what do you think, as a, as a final point, what do you think that women can do to try and help aging as they go forward? Well, let me give you um, an, some, let me tell you about another experiment we've done with Cedar sinai and are doing with a group at Minneapolis Heart Institute. We're measuring things that decrease stress, exercise, um, acupuncture, meditation versus standard medical treatment mm -hmm. and show that things that decrease stress increase the number of stem cells in your blood. Hmm. So if, if a person could do one thing that would have nothing but positive side effects, that would be to lower the stress in her life. And if she could do that, she would have a positive impact on her aging process, in part through these stem cells. Absolutely. No question about it. We know stress directly ages our stem cells. Thank you very much. Thank you.